Jason. Humberto. It's good to see you again, my friend. Uh, always a pleasure. I want, I want to tell to my community what's going on here. So I, you guys got my attention a while ago because the product that you guys are bringing to the market, it's something that I, I was trying to do myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So when I saw the capabilities of you to isolate the bees from the environment, the way you design the material, and more specifically, the results you guys got about isolating the bees, let the bees do what they do in nature, that, that hit my, hit the core. Perfect. I got a little jealous, I need to tell you. Well, that's why, we, yeah, we have to bring you in. So that's, that's good. So what I want to, I already talked with the founders, I saw where the love comes. Yeah. yeah. So they're very passionate about this. I got a lot of curiosity. And because you and I worked together in the past with big projects, Chesa, first of all, how how you get into this? Great. So I was working with uh, beekeepers at several different uh, research places. I also, beekeepers like at Google, or Western Digital, Stanford University. And they wanted presentations about new innovations in beekeeping. And so I did a little research and reached out to some of the different companies that were doing, you know, major innovations that I thought were exciting for beekeeping. And I reached out to them. And so, you know, to see if it'd be okay to use their material for my presentations. Uh, and so I reached out to Primal Bee. I really enjoyed the, the group of people and I thought their product was really exciting. And you have a lot of experience with bees. Uh, maybe we can do a I want, I want to bring to the channel to talk about World Honeybee Health, the, 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 the project that we worked together in the past. But, okay, d tell me how this works. How the specific hive. Yeah. yeah. How the hive works. Yeah. Um, so the hive is designed for thermal efficiency to try to, I guess, provide the bees with um, an environment that's perfect for internal incubation for the queen to... Uh, in the bottom, this is basically our nest box where we have the queen laying eggs uh, and producing brood. And it's the nursery, it's the, the heart of the hive. And this is where all of our population of bees is coming from. Uh, and then on top, we have a, a feeder lid and we have the uh, super. So this is where the honey production is. I have a lot of people asking me and why these frames are so big, you know, how do I fit this in my honey extractor? And that's not the point. The point is to give them the perfect environment. And so down to the shape of the frame and the length of the frame and uh, the, all the design is really to encourage a balanced airflow and thermal efficiency inside the hive. And the everything else is, you know, kept out. The cold air is kept out or the, or the how, air that's warmer. The moisture that's unwanted inside the hive is, is kept out in a way that it's isolated. Uh, so I usually do a configuration like this where uh, I use my feeder lid here. The hive is closed. The bees propolize around the inside, you know, uh, and then I'm able to add sugar water here if I need to, if, to encourage them to uh, build more comb and, and get things started in the hive. Uh, I add on my super here. Um, and this helps protect my feeder. Sometimes I'll put several feeder jars inside or I may add my hive tool in there so I don't forget it when I come back out to the hive. And then I'll put the lid on here and this extra air bubble here, it provides a whole another layer of insulation on the hive where it's needed most of the top where warmth would normally kind of rise up out of the hive. And so this increases the, the R value to 150. Um, which is really so far unheard of in other types of hives. Uh, very, very high R value. Um, let's let's uh, yeah. bring one of those big frames. Yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit because nature know what they're doing, and you guys design exactly how it works inside a tree. T tell about the design here and the like, specifics behind. So yeah, John Mario would be much better at explaining this yeah. uh, than I. He did a lot of the modeling, so he looked at many different types of hives. We have top bar hives, um, Kenya top bar hives. We have uh, Langstroth, we have Long Langstroth, you know, all these different types of hive designs over time. He's modeled those, but he also modeled wild colonies coming from inside, you know, when you get a swarm that goes inside of a structure um, or when we have a, a swarm that goes inside of a tree and it starts building, a, you know, a natural tree hive. And this is, you know, very similar to, to what they're finding. So they use this to look at 
This is the average length. If the queen has as much room as she, you know, wants to use, this is about the longest that they would normally see. You know, maybe sometimes a little bit longer or shorter, but uh, this is about the average. And so they tried to incorporate that in. Um, also, the shape. You know, this is kind of the shape that we would see in the natural frames. This shape helped them with the ventilation, how they like to control the height. So that was something that I, it got my attention. But the things that got my attention the most, and I'm going to tell you what it is right now. Yeah. Is this. Mm. When I use my camera, sometimes I get better results than the trees themselves. Yeah. What is this material? Well, how, how you got to this too? So the expanded polystyrene. They actually tried one with uh, polyurethane. They tried another with solid wood. Uh, you know, and you can, these are going to be different weights and different expenses of material. Um, this is a expanded polystyrene that's food grade, so it doesn't leach any chemicals into the, you know, into the honey. Uh, safe for the bees, safe for us, no BPAs. Um, and then this is also, uh, it's, it's weatherproof, you know, so yep. we get water, UV. It may change color, you know, when it goes out, it'll, it'll change to a, a yellowish kind of color. But it can be uh, painted using water-based paints as long as they don't have solvents or oils in the paints. You can you, okay. you know, yep, use those. But the most important, they truly isolate the bees from the outside. Yeah, yeah. And when the bees are isolated from the outside, they do miracles inside the hive. Absolutely miracles controlling CO2, air trafficking, temperature. They control everything. And when they control everything, they don't need to use too much of the resources, meaning... The beekeepers will get more of that honey they produce for themselves because the, the bees don't need to spend a lot of their own resources to keep themselves warm and surviving inside the hive. So I think this is brilliant. Brilliant, and I want to see more of that. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's more sustainable. It's, it's helpful for the bees. And it's really, you know, I've been keeping bees for about 20 years in lots of different styles of hives. And this is at least double, you know, the speed of production and... The, you know, the strength of the colony uh, in, in every primal beehive I've seen compared to a lot of the wooden hives, long, you know, stop bar hives and, and other styles of beekeeping hives. So I think it's a great innovation. Yes, it is. I, I like innovation. There is data. Did you guys compare things? There is some data yeah, that you can talk now, about? Yeah, right now we're comparing in, in different geographies. We have hives in, in the Israeli desert. We have hives in the Swiss Alps. Uh, we are working in Florida, California, Alaska, and we're seeing, you know, how these hives hold up compared to Langstroth hives or how they're used, how they're used by uh, the hobbyist backyard beekeeper compared to the commercial beekeeper. And yeah, we're seeing some really good results and yeah, just excited to watch it more and more. Um, I'm a, I have a thermometer, you know, inside of mine that sends me data and uh, also one on the outsides to kind of con compare the day night temperature curves and yeah, seeing just a, a very, you know, a very smooth line as far as the, the temperature change inside the hive. So one thing that I saw a lot is that people confuse the, the nest with the honey super. Right. Let's make that clear. Yeah. The size of the frames of the honey super is the same. You don't need to change anything. Well, yeah, it was designed that way on purpose so that beekeepers can just easily adapt to this. All they need to do is set up their, hot, their nest box. And then, yeah, the supers where you could either use mediums or deeps uh we could use frames that are like langstroth frames versus day dot frames uh either work in the in this system how many supers can you stack in each other do you have depends on how tall your ladder is oh, you feel uh, it. <laughs> so there is no limitation no limit yeah sky no limit. Strong. okay uh, yeah it's very strong uh you could have three of these on top of each other very easily with no problem um but yeah it's it's just a matter of getting up tall enough to be able to see, I see if, it. if you need to add another super. But that goes to another part of the conversation that I want to have with you because this is a question that I got from commercial beekeepers. Right. So we've, we've changed now from more traditional backyard beekeeper sideliner. And let's talk about potential commercial beekeeping utilization of that. Yeah. That was a concern of them. How many you can... How many you can stack, stack in without, you know, they, they, they think this is not solid enough for them. Right. I'm not sure. I think it's, it's pretty, pretty much, solid. Yeah, pretty solid. Yeah, I could stand on one if you'd like. I'm I'm 200 pounds, and <laughs> can we <laughs> line them up and can we do that? Sure, yeah. <laughs> that's that's good for the video. Yeah. Oh. Here we go. Oh, yeah, it is 
strong enough. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty solid. Yep. No. Good enough for me. Yeah, yeah. What's the pounds per de pressure? Huh? The, the, the pressure? 90 kilo for a cubic meter. 90 kilo per cubic meter. So, yeah. For the commercial side, when I talk to the, the guys, sometimes they're concerned about they're going to need to change a lot of the, the, the way they have operation. Right. Like with the lifting and the kind of trucks. That might be something that we're going to be working later. But they're gonna, those questions are going to come. Yeah. Yeah. But, that, yeah, we're working through that. Yeah. With several commercial beekeepers that, you know, are, are transporting hives, migratory hives, and, and using a specific pallet size. It's a 10 frame footprint um, and 8 frame hive. And this is another thing with pollination, you know, they grade hot, they grade hot. They grade the hive. And so they, we, we need to make sure that we're, you know, uh, either changing the way that we grade the hives or they're grading it based on the, the number of bees instead of considering this one deep because uh, it's really three deeps. Um, the, the height of this is three deeps. Three deeps. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's interesting. So you're working with some commercial guys. What, yeah. what are the comments you're getting? Yeah, they, they're seeing great results, you know, that it built up very fast, faster than they're used to seeing, uh, stronger. They, they seem to, the bees go out earlier in the morning, um, about an hour, hour and a half compared to the wooden hives in the same yard. Yep. Um, they're seeing them coming back later at night. So after even the sunset, you know, the, the legs throw out the wooden hives are kind of done for the day. But these are still sending out foragers and coming back with It makes a lot of sense. The way they structure the entrance and the dancing room is completely different, I, I will predict, with this hive comparing with Langstrog hive. Well, 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 not so fast, Umberto. It is true that I'm enthusiastic about this new hive and truly think that this is a better hive alternative for backyard beekeepers and sideliners that are able to afford it. However, I am not convinced that commercial beekeepers, especially in the United States, will have a better business using this hive. After this interview, now here editing it, I realized that I didn't do a good job filming the details of the hive at Epimondia and also might have given an impression that I'm convinced that commercial beekeepers will have advantages, which is something that I'm not convinced just yet. Commercial beekeeping is much more complex and operations, business plans, and management systems vary enormously. A hive like that will for sure require a significant investment from a commercial beekeeper. Not only the hives themselves, but a systemic rebuild of the whole operation to handle the innovation. Is the return of investment worth it? Only time will tell. I will be looking for commercial beekeepers that are testing it and are also willing to have an open conversation about their experiences. So, hold your horses, Umberto! And let's keep learning. I contacted the Primal Bee team and asked them for a full set of the hive so I can play around and show you guys any details you might want to see. And they agreed to send it to me. Please let me know in the comment section below what details you want to see so I can make a comprehensive video about the hive's details, one for the YouTube and another one for my private community. So, stay tuned. That being said, thank you kindly for the view and I'll see you guys in the next video. Inside the hive.tv, the show about beasts.